Good morning. Thank you for the follow. Yeah, thank you for the follow, that person. Good morning, new no night, ladies, gentlemen, and, and everybody, everybody else. else. And welcome to the Brilliant Talk Show. I'm Dragon Slayer 15001. I'm eating dinner right now. <laughs> <laughs> um and um I was I was talking about this when was it? Um I don't I don't even remember when it when it was. What? Would have been when you were home, like afternoon tea time or something? Mm. Talking about what? Uh what we wanted to talk oh, about yeah we just decided to do this today because yeah i'd shown a friend at school um this video because it's my absolute favorite um vsauce video in the world so yeah the i uh, we just because of all in us just said let's watch the bunak tasky paradox why is your voice so loud because it is I'm going to work on that because, you know, it's school times now. Um, what? It's, it's school times. School's so... I shouldn't be yelling at absurd hours of the night. Ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what about school? I think there's kids in the house behind us but I don't think there's any other kids in the area really behind us that way that, that way behind us yeah mm. like one time uh me and Mars I think there are kids that way maybe like I I've I've th there are I've heard maybe. kids from around that sort of area anyway um, let me uh set this to the right oh boy um, one time, me and Mars Baba were um, jumping on the trampoline, and like there was a kid on the other side, and we were talking, and uh, they mentioned How something I... about us climbing over the fence to hang out with them. How do I do this? Oh, you think that's good? Yeah. Uh, that's good enough, right, guys? Um. Can you check the people in the chat? Why? Check it. I mean, I mean yeah, trap, trap crawler. Thank you for the follow. Yeah, we saw it earlier. Well, I just forgot your name because I, um, I do not have the best memory. Um, and don't worry about the um. This pasta is kind of gross. The, um, uh, does this actually have like, yeah, no, it says English. Oh. Um, so the Banak Tarski paradox um because of Orionos weren't you gonna do a, like a disclaimer oh you actually wanted me to do that okay um, um if you're gonna do it you're gonna do it the internet might be built built around like yeah, copyright okay. infringements but like we okay, can still get in some trouble um this the this like stream and the VOD of the stream is for entertainment purposes, um, entertainment purposes, and therefore, um, the video is, um, I don't know the proper wording, but, like, okay to use under fair use, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah. Fair use is a, like, fair use is a US term, but, yeah. Oh, that's a US term? I just thought it was an internet term. I haven't seen anything else being said Blech. anyways uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's okay to use because it's for entertainment purposes only that is not even the, like that's not even the rules for fair use wait really it has to oh. be transformative you have to change something uh, so it's not just, just a re-upload because we're talking and it's a different video. I mean, yeah, Blech. and, and it has to so be bad. informative. Like, you're talking, if you're talking about it, you have to state, say stuff about it. In yeah. The, um, it's information. very nuanced and I don't understand a lot of it. Information. Uh, this video 
I watch it so many times and it plays a big role in my life. Hopefully that's new information for you. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Fair use is complicated and so are copyright laws everywhere. And Did you want this? It's no so thanks. Gross. If you don't want it, throw it out. No. Um, I need food. But I yeah, the internet is built around copyright infringement. I'll be back. And I don't think Vsauce will care. And even if they did, what's the bets they find this stream? Or this VOD? Huh? Yeah. Didn't think so. Um, but yeah, uh. Don't worry about the loading, that's just because I've put it on zero. And so it's like, oh, what, what? There's no video. You've got to load the video. It's not playing. How is the Amori music? Man, I'm bad at small talk. And this goes for 20, oh no, 24 minutes. How are we going to get a two hour rant about this? How? I guess, I guess you guys are in for a um, short uh, podcast episode this time around. I don't know, but oh my goodness! What? I'm hungry and I didn't want the pasta, so I don't know. You were like, I threw it out and I was like, I'll put For it in the For context. Fridge. But I, I, I can eat cereal if I want to eat cereal. For context, Curse of Oyonos has just brought a bowl with five wheat mix and a handful of salt. This is uh, my normal snack, okay? This is what I eat as a snack. When you I call me always hungry. Mm -mm. No, I don't. This I is don't. more than I have for a snack. Yeah, but maybe you should be eating like wheat bix or at least cereal or something for filling instead of just handfuls of sultanas. I actually put in the effort to make something that will uh, fill me up and... <laughs> Not just like tide me over to the next, tide me over to the next ten hours. Yeah. Anyways, let's watch the video, and I really appreciate you waiting for me. Baratowski paradox. Let's go. I thought you were about to say ba 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 ba, and I was like, what? Excuse me. Hey, Vsauce, Michael here. There's a famous way to seemingly create chocolate out of nothing. Maybe you've seen it before. This chocolate oh, bar is four squares by eight <laughs> squares. But if you cut it like this, and then like this, and finally like this, you can rearrange the pieces like so and wind up with the same four by eight bar, but with a leftover piece apparently created out of thin air. There's a popular animation of this illusion as well. I call it an illusion because it's just that. Fake. I can, I can In reality, the final bar it. is a bit smaller, 
it contains this much less chocolate. Each square along the cut is shorter than it was in the original, but the cut makes it difficult to notice right away. The animation is extra misleading because it tries to cover up its deception. The lost height of each square is surreptitiously added in, while the piece moves to make it hard to notice. <laughs> I mean, come on. Obviously, you cannot cut up a chocolate bar and rearrange the pieces into more than you started with. <laughs> or can you? One of the strangest theorems in modern mathematics is the banach tarski paradox. It proves that there is in fact a way to take an object and separate it into five different pieces. And then, with those five pieces, simply rearrange them, no stretching required, into two exact copies of the original item. Same density, same more. size, same everything. What? Seriously, to dive into the there mind blow no that it way. is and the way it fundamentally questions that, math and ourselves, no, we have to start by asking a few questions. The, those, First, those pieces what is infinity? Table, a number? Bigger. I mean, it's the, nowhere yeah. on the number line, but we often say things like, there's an infinite number of blah, blah, blah. And as far as we know, infinity could be real. The universe may be infinite in size and flat, extending out forever and ever without end, beyond even the part we can observe or ever hope to observe. That's exactly what infinity is. Not a number per se, but rather a size. The size of something that doesn't end. Infinity is not the biggest number. Instead, it is how many numbers there are but there are different sizes of infinity. The smallest type of infinity is countable infinity, the number of hours in forever. It's also the number of whole numbers that there are, natural numbers, the numbers we use when counting things like one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Sets like these are unending, but they are the countable. <laughs> countable means that you can count them from one element to any other in a finite amount of time. Even if that finite amount of time is longer than you will live or the universe will exist for, it's still finite. Uncountable infinity, on the other hand, is literally bigger, too big to even count. The number of real numbers that there are, not just whole numbers, but all numbers, is uncountably infinite. You literally cannot count even from zero to one in a finite amount of time by naming every real. What? Um, we're having technical Why are you twisting it? I made the mic do something. Um. Okay. Um. Oh. Mm. Okay. Can you turn that on? I mean, where do there you even go. start? Zero. Okay. But what comes next? Zero point zero 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 zero. Eventually, we would imagine a one going somewhere at the end, but there is no end. We could always add another zero. Uncountability makes this set so much larger than the set of all whole numbers that even between zero and one, there are more numbers than there are whole numbers on the entire endless number line. What? Dara Cantor's famous diagonal argument helps illustrate this. Imagine list a, a number like start an infinity so infinite that you go insane trying to figure out the first one. Mm. Every number between zero and one. 
Since they are uncountable and can't be listed in order, let's imagine randomly generating them forever with no repeats. Each number we generate can be paired with a whole number. If there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the two, that is if we can match one whole number to each real number on our list, that would mean that countable and uncountable sets are the same size. But we can't do that. Even though this list goes on forever, forever isn't enough. Watch this. If we go diagonally down our endless list of real numbers and take the first decimal of the first number and the second of the second number, the third of the third, and so on, and add one to each, subtracting one if it happens to be a nine, we can generate a new real number that is obviously between zero and one, but since we've defined it to be different from every number on our endless list in at least one place, it's clearly not contained in the list. What? Why do you have to do it like that? I don't know. But what I'm... What I'm... Not getting about this segment, this specific part, is... It's clearly not contained on the list. We just got... We, we just took the places, like... <laughs> like, wouldn't it already be on the list, though? Yeah, because it's infinite and contains all entries. That would be already on the list. Yeah, but... I don't know. Um, he's explaining it the wrong way. Like, you're saying, like, oh, we can just make one, like, out of thin air. But, like, and then, um, like, that's not corresponding to a whole number. But the way you should be explaining it is that, like, they go on. Each number goes on forever. So, like, you know, like, there's just way too many of them. Like, you can't even start the set. He did that earlier and then brought up this. Yeah, this. As if it's more proof. No, this doesn't no. make any goddamn sense. Yeah. Our list is infinite, so it contains all entries. What you've presented here, Vsauce, is... Uh, proof against what you just said. <laughs> okay. In other words, we've used up every single whole number, the entire infinity of them, and yet we can still come up with more real numbers. Here's something else that is true but counterintuitive. There are the same number of even numbers as there are even and odd numbers. At first, that sounds ridiculous. Clearly, there are only half as many even numbers as all whole numbers, but that intuition is wrong. Yeah. The set of all whole numbers is denser, but every even number can be matched with a whole number. You will never run out of members of either set, so this one-to-one -one correspondence shows that both sets are the same size. Infinity In other words, infinity divided by two, divided is, still by an two is still infinity. Oh. <laughs> Infinity I plus one said. is also infinity. A good illustration of this. I forgot he said that. Uh, like, yeah, infinity yeah. divided by two is still infinity. And then not, he says. Because it's not a number. Huh. So, like, putting it in, like, equations with numbers and expecting it to change will not do anything because it's not a number. And therefore, isn't, like. But th that is not the same, the sun. Hmm? Okay. If you say, like, what about, like, algebra with x? x is a variable, and therefore, like, technically, it's in place of a number, and therefore it is a number. I can see from your face that you were going to say that. Infinity is not a placeholder. For a number. 
and I guess like yeah that that is how those work and like what about E whatever it's called or Pi or Tau but th those are just replacing numbers too those are just um one singular letter uh, one yeah one singular letter so you don't have to write a giant string of numbers literally infinite string of numbers for some yeah pi and tau because mm. pi is just half of tau no tau is half of pi no isn't it because it's like <laughs> the symbol the symbol may say otherwise wait it's not but tau is the bigger one really pi is half of tau why don't people use tau in like why don't we use that in school why do we always use pi uh, i have no idea and a uh, youtuber named vihart has a lot to say on the subject because tau is just altogether better suited you want whatever what two pi are or whatever that is circumference circumference is two pi radius or tau times radius or pi times diameter which is what you're like supposed to use but like the diameter is just two ah like because it's because pi is circumference over diameter mm. anyways <laughs> anyway back this is Hilbert's Paradox of the Grand Hotel. Imagine a hotel oh, with a countably infinite that? number of rooms. But now, imagine that there is a person booked into every single room. Seemingly... What? I want to stay in this hotel. I feel like it'd have a good, uh, a good vibe. And um, Hilbert would definitely be not just the owner, but the receptionist like the funky owner that's also the receptionist because they're so passionate about their business and with like a waistcoat in the same like color scheme as the hotel and it's like you know mm. yeah that's what i imagine hilbert's hotel to be like oh i have a no don't make a game idea for oh hilbert's i'm not hotel. no 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 but I have a questionably good idea for what we should talk about next week. I will tell you after uh, the stream. Okay. Because Wait, we can't lock it in because you might not like the idea. Lock it in and capture my reaction live. <laughs> <laughs> More views. <laughs> I mean, but then... What happens if you don't want to talk about that? I have to suck it up and deal with it. <laughs> okay. I, get, I get someone else to switch in. And they have to deal <laughs> with it. It's fully booked, right? No. Infinite sets go against common sense. You see, if a new guest shows up and wants a room, all the hotel has to do is move the guest in room number one to room number two and the guest in room two to room three and three to four and four to five and so on, because the number of rooms is never ending, we cannot run out of rooms. Infinity minus one is also infinity again. If one guest leaves the hotel, we can shift every guest the other way. Guest two goes to room one, three to two, four to three, and so on. Because we have an infinite amount of guests that is a never ending supply of them, no room will be left empty. As it turns out, you can subtract any finite number from infinity and still be left with infinity. It doesn't care. It's unending. What? Hilbert's Hotel sounds like some like something that would be in TPOH. You're so right. <laughs> Bonaktarsky hasn't left our sights yet. All of this is related. We are now ready to move on to shapes. Hilbert's hotel Yay! can be applied to a circle. Points around the circumference can be thought of as guests. If we remove one point from the circle, 
that point is gone, right? Infinity tells us it doesn't matter. The circumference of a circle is irrational. It's the radius times two pi. So if we mark off points beginning from the hole, every radius length along the circumference going clockwise, we will never land on the same point twice, ever. We can count off each point we mark with a whole number. So this set is never ending, it's but countable, ending just like guests in rooms in Hilbert's hotel. And like those guests, what? even oh, though here. one has checked out, what? we can oh, just... What? Where's Moon Man Instrumental? The music is called Moon Man Instrumental. Like, from the from the video? Yeah. Okay. I can't hear it. I know... I know that. It's sad. I know, David. Moon Man Instrumental is the one he plays when he goes, or is it? Oh, right, okay. Okay. Shift the rest. Move them counterclockwise, and every room will be filled. Point one moves to fill in the hole. Point two fills in the place where point one used to be. Three fills in two, and so on. Since we have an unending supply of numbered points, no hole will be left unfilled. The missing point is forgotten. We apparently never needed it to be complete. There's one last neato consequence of infinity we should discuss before tackling Bonoktarsky. Ian Stewart famously proposed a brilliant dictionary, one that he called the Hyperwebster. The Hyperwebster lists every single possible word of any length formed from the 26 letters in the English alphabet. It begins with A, followed by AA, then AAA, then AAAA, and after an infinite number of those, AB, then ABA, then ABAA, ABAAA, and so on until Z, ZA, ZAA etc etc until the final entry an infinite sequence of z's such a dictionary would contain every single word nay every single thought definition description truth lie name story what happened to amelia Earhart would be in that dictionary as well as every single thing that didn't happen to amelia Earhart. everything that could be said Do you hear him? No, we got nothing. Be right back. Back. Yeah. Tell the demons that were vibing with you guys. I said hi. What? I love how this person just comes in here, says that, and just never says anything else. They're quiet, but they're still here. We're still here, supposedly, if we are to trust that thing. That thing being the, um, users in chat. Yeah. But who knows? Anyway, back to Bonatarsky paradox. Might you say it's a Using word? our alphabet. Obviously, it would be huge, but the company publishing it might realize that they could take a shortcut 
if they put all the words that begin with A in a volume titled A, they wouldn't have to print the initial A. Readers would know to just add the A because it's the A volume. By removing the initial A, the publisher is left with every A word sans the first A, which has surprisingly become every possible word. Just one of the 26 volumes has been decomposed into the entire thing. It is now that we're ready to investigate this video's titular paradox. What if we turned an object, a 3D thing, into a hyperwebster? Could we decompose pieces of it into the whole thing? Yes. Like, the first. I want to grab the polystyrene ball and crush it in my hand. I've held polystyrene. It's pretty strong. Okay. I'm right back on. Oh my goodness, where are you going? <sighs> I think Casavoyanos has gone to grab a styrofoam bowl. And almost trip over my throne's table. <laughs> Almost deceased. You would have never Where's known. Where's the styrofoam ball? There it is. You can't see it because we don't have a webcam, but <laughs> they sure are trying to crush it. Couldn't even do it in one hand, resorting to two. <laughs> it's what? <laughs> this is Squished what... <laughs> it a bit. This is what um, people who play football wish the earth was like. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's what people who play football wish the earth was like. Anyway, the, my point has been proven. You cannot just simply crush a styrofoam ball. I think you should be able to. Also, I have so many of these. What are you doing? What's... What is... <laughs> Do you keep watching videos? I'm just looking at Discord because I don't want to miss too much. <laughs> Look at that though. Anyway. Like this. No, do not eat it. <laughs> it's so tempting. It looks so tasty. The right. thing we need to do is give every single point on the surface of the sphere Great one circle, name and Michael. one name only. A good way to do this is to name them after how they can be reached by a given starting point. If we move this starting point across the surface of the sphere in steps that are just the right length, no matter how many times or in what direction we rotate, so long as we never backtrack, it will never wind up in the same place twice. We only need to rotate in four directions to achieve this paradox. Up, down, left, and right. Around two perpendicular axes. We are going to need every single possible sequence that can be made of any finite length out of just these four rotations. That means we will need left, right, up, and down, as well as left, 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 up, left, down, but of course not left, right, because, well, that's backtracking. Going left and then right means you're the same as you were before you did anything. I've always, so. I always wondered why he made the X that big. Keep watching. No left rights, no right lefts, and no up downs, oh. and no down <laughs> Also, notice it that I'm writing the small, rotations actually. in order right to left. But why doesn't he just have them separate entries, each with their own separate X's? Because he accidentally drew the X too big. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, like the video is getting to the good bit. Yeah, it's getting to the good bit. So the final rotation is the leftmost letter. That will be important that, later on. Anyway, a list of all important. possible sequences of allowed rotations that are finite in length is... Well, huge. Countably infinite, in fact. But if we apply each one of them to a starting point in green here, and then name the point we land on after the sequence that brought us there, 
we can name a countably infinite set of points on the surface. Let's look at how, say, these four strings on our list would work. Right, up, left. Okay, rotating the starting point this way takes us here. Let's color code the point based on the final rotation in its string. In this case, it's left, and for that, we will use purple. Next up, down, down. Um, yeah, left, up, right. That just looks like, that looks like you could get the same, get to the same place with up. That just sequence like takes us here. We name the point DD and color it blue since we ended with a down rotation. RDR, that will be this point's name, takes us here. And for a final right rotation, let's use red. Finally, for a sequence that ends with up, let's color code the point orange. Now, if we imagine completing this process for every single sequence, Wait. we will have a countably infinite number of points named and color coded. That's great, but oh, not so enough. Like there are an uncountably infinite, infinite number of points on a sphere's Wait, surface. But no. How does a countably infinite number of sequences make an uncountably infinite amount of points? You oh, repeated it infinite times. Right, the starting points. Yeah. We can just pick a point we missed, any point, uh -huh. and color it green, making it a new starting point, and then run every sequence from yeah. here. After doing this, to an uncountably infinite number of starting points, we will have indeed named and colored every single point on the surface just once. With the exception of poles. Every sequence has two poles yeah, of rotation, kind of locations that. on the sphere that come back to exactly where they started. For any sequence of right or left rotations, the poles are the north and south poles. The problem with poles like these is that more than one sequence can lead us to them. They can be named more than once and be colored in more than one color. For example, if you follow some other sequence to the north or south pole, any subsequent rights or lefts will be equally valid names. In order to deal with this, we're going to just count them out of the normal scheme and color them all yellow. Every sequence has two, so there are a countably infinite amount of them. Now, with every point on the sphere given just one name and just one of six colors, Let's we go. are ready to take the entire oh, sphere yeah. apart. Every point on the surface corresponds to a unique line of it's points below it all the way to the center point, and we will be dragging every point's line along with it. The lone center point we will set aside. Okay, first we cut out and extract all the yellow poles, the green starting points, the orange up points, the blue down points, and the red and purple left and right points. That's the entire sphere. With just these pieces, Fuzzy. you could build the whole thing. But take a look at the left piece. It is defined by being a piece composed of every point accessed via a sequence ending with a left rotation. If we rotate this piece right, that's the same as adding an R to every point's name. But left and then right is a backtrack. They cancel each other out. And look what happens when we reduce them away. The set becomes the same as a set of all points with names that end with L, but also U, D, and every point reached with no rotation. That's the full set of starting points. We have turned less than a quarter of the sphere into nearly three quarters just by rotating it. We added nothing. It's like the Hyper Webster. Hmm. If we add the right piece and the poles of rotation in the center point, well, We've got the entire sphere again, but with stuff left over. To make a second copy, let's rotate the up piece down. The down ups cancel because, well, it's the same as going nowhere, and we're left with a set of all starting points, the entire up piece, the right piece, and the left piece. But there's a problem here. We don't need this extra set of starting points. We still haven't used the original ones. No worries. Let's just start over. 
we can just move everything from the up piece that turns into a starting point when rotated down. That means every point whose final rotation is up. Let's put them in the down piece. Of course, after rotating, points named UU will just turn into points named U. And that would give us a copy here and here. So as it turns out, we need to move all points with any name that is just a string of U's. We will put them in the down piece and rotate the up piece down, which makes it congruent to the up, right, and left pieces. Add in the down piece along with some up and the starting point piece and, well, we're almost done. The poles of rotation and center are missing from this copy, but no worries. There's a countably infinite number of holes where the poles of rotation used to be, which means there is some pole around which we can rotate this sphere such that every pole hole orbits around without hitting another. Well, this is just a bunch of circles with one point. If I drilled a hole in the earth, could we just spin it and it would be fixed? No. Like this? Missing. We fill because them each like we did earlier. a finite amount of dirt. And also the earth isn't a perfect sp sphere. Also boring. And we do the same for the center point. Imagine a circle that contains it inside the sphere and just fill in from infinity. And look what we've done. We have taken one sphere and turned it into two identical spheres without adding anything. One plus one equals one. That took a while to go through, but the implications are huge. And mathematicians, scientists, and philosophers are still debating them. Could such a process happen in the real world? I mean, it can happen mathematically, and math allows us to abstractly predict and describe a lot of things in the real world with amazing accuracy. But does the Banach-Tarski paradox take it too far? Is it a place where math and physics separate? We still don't know. History is full of examples of mathematical concepts developed in the abstract that we did not think would ever apply to the real world for years, decades. Um, for a physics project, we have to make a um, presentation based on um, one of the chapter topics that we're going to go through. Um, anything that could even remotely relate to this in the slightest way, I will link it to this so that I get to talk about this for like <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> centuries Wonderful. until eventually science caught up and realized they were totally applicable and useful. The Banach-Tarski paradox could actually happen in our real world. The only catch, of course, is that the five pieces you cut your object into aren't simple shapes. They must be infinitely complex and detailed. That's not possible to do in the real world, where measurements can only get so small and there's only a finite amount of time to do anything. But math says it's theoretically valid, and some scientists think it may be physically valid, too. There have been a number of papers published suggesting a link between Banach-Tarski and the way tiny, tiny subatomic particles can collide at high energies and turn into more particles than we began with. We are finite creatures. Our lives are small and can only scientifically consider a small part of reality. What's common for us is just a sliver of what's available. We can only see so much of the electromagnetic spectrum. We can only delve so deep into extensions of space. Common sense applies to that which we can access. But common sense is just that, common. Like if total know. sense is what we want, we should be prepared. You talk to any person that I know and you will come to the realization that common sense is not common at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry for um, damaging your ears. <laughs> to accept that we shouldn't call infinity weird or strange. 
the results we've arrived at by accepting it are valid. True within the system we use to understand, measure, predict, and order the universe, perhaps the system still needs perfecting. But at the end of the day, history continues to show us that the universe isn't strange. We are. And as always, thanks for watching. I go into my YouTube recommendations. Oh. What? Não consigo mais acompanhar. I hadn't either. What is? What is that? Finally, as always, the description is full of links to learn more. There are also oh, a number of books linked down there that really helped me wrap my mind kind of around Banat Tarski. First of all, Leonard Wapner's The Pea and the Sun. This book is fantastic and it's full of a lot of the preliminaries needed to understand the proof that comes later. He also talks a lot about the ramifications of what Banat Tarski and their theorem might mean for mathematics. Also, if you want to talk about math and whether it's discovered or invented, whether it really truly will map onto the universe, Yanofsky's The Outer Limits of Reason is great. This is the favorite book of mine that I've read this entire year. Another good one is E. Brian Davies' Why Beliefs Matter. This is actually Korn's favorite book, as you might be able to see there. It's delicious and full of lots of great information about the limits of what we can know and what science is and what Never mathematics is. Michael if you Beasel love infinity and that. math, I cannot more highly recommend Matt Parker's Things to Make and Do in the Fourth Dimension. He is hilarious, and this book is very, very great at explaining some pretty awesome things. So keep reading, and if you're looking for something to watch, I hope you've already watched Kevin Lieber's film on Field Day. I already did a documentary about Whittier, Alaska over there. Kevin's got a great short film about putting things out on the internet and having people react to them. There's a rumor that Jake Roper might be doing oh, something on Field Day soon. So check out my... That's awfully relevant. It was a, he said it was a book about putting things out onto the internet and having people react to them. It's awfully relevant. <laughs> I thought you were talking about Bo Burnham for some reason, and I was like, what do you mean? No. I'm talking about this goddamn screen. Fine. Check out better. Kevin's and subscribe to Field Day for upcoming Jake Roper action, yeah? He's actually in this room right now. Say hi, Jake. Hi. Thanks for filming this, by the way. You're welcome. Um, guys, I really appreciate who you all are. And as always, thanks for watching. And he says it again, and the animation plays again. Whoa, whoa. Stop. It does. Wonderful. Um. Oh, my interpretation on whether um math is discovered or invented is um it's invented, but um it's like it's like um math is you go to a like you migrate to a country and you don't understand the language so they have someone sit there and translate it back into your language that's what math is <laughs> why does that doesn't make a, a language interpreter for the universe i guess um Is there anything to talk about for the last 10 minutes? Did NASA do anything about the um, communication thing they got? What? In 2020. Are you, are you sure that was a real thing and not 2020 shenanigans? Who knows? <laughs> I think they should have replied to the recording though. They were like, Ayo! Bestie, what's good? How are you going out there on the other side of the universe?
<laughs> um. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure why I thought like thought this was a good idea. We we have like ten minutes to go for a short one, an hour to go. Oh, we're doing a short one. <laughs> an hour to go for a we're not doing a long standard one. length. Um, we're not doing a standard length one. We're doing a short one because I can't be bothered. Also, I got homework. Unless you guys want to help me with my homework. <laughs> yeah, don't. Do you want to analyze some images with me? Do not. <laughs> do not. What's do the that. star thing? What? What's the star thing? Oh, this. Um, there are f 48 regular polyhedra. Oh, that goes for half an hour. Okay, never mind. I mean, it could bridge the gap. You want to get to a standard length? My, uh, my attention span uh, is not 30 minutes long for a video that I cannot hear. Good point. <laughs> I mean... I make an exception for this one because it's like one of my favorite videos. Uh, but yeah. It's still um, saved to my favorites because I know the um, name of the video. Also, I can just search up Vsauce Sphere and it comes up. So. <laughs> Vsauce Sphere. Try it, look it up. All right. Um, no, nah, like just on YouTube. Oh, on YouTube. Oh, no wonder. Oh, yeah, actually, actually, nah. Try searching it up on Google. Alright. Vsauce Sphere. Holy flip! <laughs> it's the top result! First res First result, actually. Oh, what did I do? I'm going to show you guys this. There it is. I searched Vsauce Sphere. First result, that video. See, I don't even... That's why it's not saved to my favorites, because it doesn't... Nope. The... What... I almost. Oh, would that? Oh, have... oh, oh. Yeah, that would have looped. Oh, oh that would have been scary. Actually, let's see. For, for the yeah. end of this stream, let's loop it. Oh, like straight straight after you tell me what we're doing the next time. Uh. Is that a room? No, Love before. Box? Let's. Let's let it loop. While we um. When the teacher accidentally goes on the, uh, on the, um, on the computer when they're streaming, like on the Zoom bit when they're streaming. And then... It's awfully slow. Like, even we got some delay. It is awfully slow. It looks like a mirror. I tried watching the Mirror Sphere video, but it wasn't interesting. But, uh, yeah, that is... Um, all we have the patience for, or all we have the topic for. Anyway, all we have the topic for today. <laughs> Plug your stuff. <laughs> um, I should, I'll put, this, I need to make myself good. a Discord. I'll revamp one of my old Discords and turn it um. into a Discord for myself that I, like, we'll have, like, house element like elements from the house uh, that it'll be like the public server um uh, yeah. uh, i want to um, do something oh, sorry, like that sorry. too um, but plug your stuff um, oh did you want me to go grab the usb stick <laughs> very funny it's got minecraft Look on it Look at that. it's tiny the amount of space mm -hmm. left over after like all the different like mirror thingies is the same size that the particles need to be in order for the Van Aktarsky paradox actually to work. <laughs> um, I'm so Curse of Voinos. It's uh, on the screen. It's on the screen, yep. 
Oh boy, that's going to go. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's going to go all the way down. I don't know um, what other stuff you want me to share. Um, I don't know anything you want. Um, yeah, like I'll put, I'll make a Discord, I'll revamp it for like fans and stuff. And I'll put it on uh, my description in the, um, in the, um, the, um... Twitch? Yeah, in the Twitch. In the Twitch. <laughs> yeah. I forgot what it's called. I'm Dragon Slayer Official here. Follow me if you haven't already. Dragon you Slayer already, 15001 yeah. on other Plot platforms. Twist. It's connected to my Twitch. I stream every Wednesday and Sunday... So, next Sunday, Amori? Yes. Uh, I, either the box or Amori. And Wednesday, we'll be talking about Homestuck. See ya! What?